and Art Cashin from UBS and Randy Frederick from uh, Charles Schwab uh, on the phone. Uh, Art, what are the market on close uh, orders and uh, expecting a bit of softness into the close? Uh, yes, it, 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 the bulls are going to be on defense going into the close. A couple, about 10 minutes ago, the indications were for over a billion dollars for sale on balance for the bell. Normally, that would be strong enough to move the Dow down maybe 20 points or so. So they're going to have to be on defense. The Dow has taken out the 200-day moving average. It has moved lower than that. It has stayed above uh, the August lows, which are uh, 25,440. And uh, we're also looking at the S&P August lows, which are 2822. So uh, it's going to be a very defensive final 10 minutes. And, and Arthur, just in terms of the factors that have weighed on the market today, clearly the shape of the yield curve, clearly that international data. Anything else that you're hearing? Uh, we haven't really touched on Italian political risk and Argentinian peso. Are those factors as well? Oh, absolutely. And, and the uh, face-off between Pakistan and India, two nuclear weapons nations that are uh, uh, going nose to nose. And, and the, uh, the Hong Kong demonstrations and some demonstrations in Russia. So the geopolitical backdrop is not healthy at all. Randy, uh, let's talk about the levels that we've seen in the market. As, uh, as we just heard from Arthur, we've gone through the 200-day moving average on the Dow. What are the key levels you're watching as to whether you're expecting more, more downside from here in the short term? Well, I am keeping an eye on the S&P 500, of course. That's kind of a better, broader gauge of the overall market. And, uh, you know, we're only down about 6% from the July 26th high, and we're still up over 13% year-to-date, so that's not too bad. What I am looking at from a technical perspective, which I think is kind of important, is is that 10% correction level. That's where I would um, remind people to keep an eye on because um, there it sort of converges with the lows of the March and June pullback, and they're almost they're both within just a few points of each other. So I expect there to be a fair amount of technical support there. But the only stopping point between here and there is really the 200-day moving average, which is around 2795. So if you look at that, we're still talking about a potential for another 50 points before we hit any sort of slowdown speed bump. Chris, is that how you're thinking about it from a technical standpoint as well? I'm thinking about it from a behavioral perspective, from a sentiment perspective. Are we seeing the type of stress and fear that often shows up near market low? I think one of the big changes today, are, and probably you saw this too, is the big spike in put call ratios starting to finally show Absolutely. up in this market. You look for spikes of put calls near lows. I'm not sure we're there yet, but it's a start. That data can be a little bit early. We've also seen really big outflows from the spider uh, over the last 15 days since the market peaked. Only $25 billion uh, of uh, flows there. So there's a flush going on here in the sentiment world that I think is notable. Arthur, we actually had good news yesterday on trade. Uh, does the market now say that it doesn't care about that good news? What's the key factor from here going forward? Well, well the good news was somewhat short term and, and it was much more of a relief rally. It was not the start of, of a new upward move. Yeah, trade will be important, but you're going to need to see something more constructive than a temporary delay. When they, when they looked all through that, the feeling was that it was somewhat less about trade and more of a chance to give a sigh of relief to President Xi with everything going on in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. take pressure off on trade and give him some room to maneuver. So it might have been a gift from President Trump, and that's why it has not held. How, how does this compare? This August, historically, light volumes tends to be volatile. How does this compare to what we've seen uh, in August's past? It, it, there is a comparison. One of the reasons that August has a history of being volatile is that many people are on vacation. Therefore, markets are thinner. So a little bit of selling has a more disproportionate influence because you're selling into a kind of vacuum. That, we saw some of that today. Randy, how concerned are some of your clients about the yield curve inversion? Do you think it is specifically a factor that has led a lot of people to sell today? Uh, to some extent, yes, and I think there's no question that there were some program trades tied to it, which clicked off right at the open and when we saw the inversion. Now, we're not inverted at the moment. As the day went on, we got away from that. Um, but it's important to keep in mind that this inversion is one of a number of signals that signal a potential recession, and the typical lead time here is about 12 months. And during that time, it needs to stay inverted. We've only been inverted for just a very short period of time today. So, yes, it is something to be aware of, um, and I know there were some trades uh, that were tied to it, and we're probably seeing a few of those here right at the end of the day as well. But if it, if it levels off from here, and, and keep in mind, we've got another um, another Fed meeting coming up here in just a few weeks that are in all likelihood, I mean, the market's pricing in 100 percent chance of a cut, and frankly, a 36 percent chance that that cut could be 50 basis points.
Randy, it looks like we're going to close uh, at or, or near the lows of the session. Assuming that's the case, what are you watching overnight and, and what do you expect to happen at the Open tomorrow? Well, the most important thing that I watch is I come in here a few hours before market open. I want to see what the pre-market futures are doing because as, as while our equity markets close at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, the futures are going to trade all night long, and they'll be a very, very accurate indicator, as they always are, of what the market will open. That doesn't mean it'll stay that way the rest of the day, but we'll, we'll have an idea within three, four hours before market open of, of where equities are going to go.